Uh, good morning, uh, viewers and uh, listeners of Concerned uh, Citizens Media. Uh, thank you for coming back. Uh, I always appreciate your comments and uh, also uh, your attendance. Thank you so much. So today I will start with a uh, uh, Oromo Media Network uh, program, uh, or, or, you know, a transmission program about the atrocities uh, happened in Oromia by Opidio, by the now Prosperity Party, Oromo Prosperity Party uh, security forces. Uh, especially, I will uh, uh, focus on the, you know, the revealing evidence uh, mentioned by uh, uh, Angasa Ibrahim. Uh, you might know him. Uh, this guy is, uh, he was uh, very famous uh, before he returned to Ethiopia, he was on the social media. Now he is uh, uh, a parliament member, he's a, in a parliament, so he's an, his, his speech is on the official standard. He is not just ordinary uh, activist, uh, you know, just uh, uh, speaking on uh, social media. Now he's an official. Uh, he's a parliament member, he's uh, in the government, in Ethiopian government. So uh, <clears throat> what he's saying in this video is in a, in a Fano Romo, is a very, very uh, revealing, uh, very important witness about the, especially about the killing of uh, the uh, Karayu Oromos. Uh, I reported last time, and many different media also reported uh, the massacre uh, carried out on the Karayuaram Oromos, including uh, uh, Abagadas or senior uh, leadership of the Karayu Oromos. So the same guy, uh, uh, Angasa Ibrahim, in a previous, uh, I think, uh, last two days, uh, he was talking about. Uh, Oromo Liberation Army expanding in uh, different Oromia zones. He say uh, OLA was only confined in a in a Wolega, West Wolega uh, area and uh, some in some area like uh, Eastern. Uh, he exposed. He exposed. Uh, or he revealed that operation, uh, which is not is not supposed to come from his, uh, you know, from this official. Uh, if you remember, uh, uh, the Ethiopian government they don't want to talk about uh, uh, they don't want to talk about the strengths of Oromo Liberation Army operation. Uh, if you remember, the letter they sent to that media, you know, not to do any reporting, uh, to cover it up, uh, to hide the operation, and, uh, you know, give them a chance to uh, eliminate it in a secretive way. So this official guy, Angasa Ibrahim, was talking openly on the social media. He got so many followers, and he said, OLF. Oh, LAA is everywhere in Oromia now. What the government is doing? They are in Eastern and Western Wolega, Eastern and Western Hararge. They are in Shoah. They are in Bale. They are in Arsi. They are everywhere. What's happening with the government? He was asking. How they became like expanded like this? So uh, now again today, uh, the same guy, Angasa Ibrahim, Dr. Angasa Ibrahim, uh, is talking about uh, about uh, Karayu Oromo's killing. He is revealing. Uh, he is uh, blaming. He is accusing the Abiy Ahmed administration, senior official, senior official, ordering this massacre. Uh, if you remember. Uh, 
the Ethiopian government, the Oromia regional uh, government, denied about this killing. They blamed, uh, you know, Onek Shani for this killing. So now uh, he is talking about this is carried out by the government uh, officer, senior officer or the head of the police uh, person. Uh, so you're going to hear it in, a, you know, in Afalo Romo, if possible, please translate it and, uh, you know, and uh, document it, uh, this uh, speech. Uh, it is very important evidence for future for future, uh, you know, uh, truth finding or uh, accountability uh, for those uh, victims. Uh, what I'm thinking in the future, these people, uh, these opidios, uh, the current Oromo Prosperity Party officials, uh, for some reason, maybe there is internal conflict, maybe there is a power struggle, maybe there is a division between them. We don't know the reason, but they are, you know, they are giving us some uh, light about who committed what in Oromia region. So we might know, we might learn in the future uh, about other crimes, about these uh, assassinations, like uh, about the killing of Abdul Jabbar Hussein, the lawyer, about the killing of Haj Alu Hundesa, many other killings in happening in that uh, uh, region. So we might hear from this group if this infighting or this conflict or this uh, power struggle continue, uh, we might have uh, opportunity to learn more. So this is very important document. It's not an easy thing and uh, it should be uh, translated in English or other language and uh, uh, kept, uh, must be kept for uh, future reference. To, for accountability for this killing. So let's listen what he say. Uh, and I have also other uh, news. Arayum, Divicha Kalate, Alkan Gutu, Waixi, Hara, Serna Havajatu in Godate, Ega at the Rep Godate, Alkan Gutu at the Chabula, Gava di Tamilava, Ganama Police need a case, Hammer said. Some of the police need a game, Ijolation in a Malab, Ham Polisati, Tijiba Ibetu, Police need some food at the age or let it again, Gava di Tamilava, Sadasa di Tamilab. Gavadi Demila Magazetinaga Namasodomi Sagal Kavanjet Namasodomi Sagali Kavan Namakudaja Bosonabasak Ejadam Gay Saniti Chilpi Pachisani Nasumale Jesanjet Nasumale. This is very revealing. Comes of them Nasumale Ega Kavameo Namima Vajeva Hiduno Sodan Damu. Manamurti Tesu no Sotan Damu Savamia Jeva Mugman Nam Pudajait Bosona Basak Jamut Jilpi Fachisanita Ugantaru Lamatu Panahe Sabe Hana Jeva Min Lamembe Hana Halupum Be Hanadu Ugata Navas Waralamas and Amamakas and Inuit to Nagaja Sanit. Also, Malja to a Pansila and Canada case. Also, Namadi Tamis Namasotomi Sagla, Utuma Kam del Sanu, and Kajil to Chichi Botany. Also, Kas Botany, Bakataka Pitani. Odu to the Rant and Hate Motumatu. A Botigada and Rajuda, Jesse Tayatu, Nutin Katu Turte, Hambisuka and his servant with Jani to a Lepolisa for Matajetu. Shanela Janet Casper. Jarisha name is Mot. Umatoro Mot. Karayuna Lanatu. You are an Ababa 
ki ye altu baadil le kharra juno kule ye ki jami orobo mi. Jo hati ti ye na de su baadil le kharra juno orobo mi orobo man. Orobo man ni tanu ti kule juno man ti kabna wale injan nu tun. Hogat sawan. Hogat humbe. Hadot ti filala sabasan kam. Hantum ma sabasan kam. Oso aboti gadaati fi namni soddo mi saglam kumbututu yakka ma taani. Ega takka kabaman hinda isi ne. Mana ida aga isani korachu ni ndandamu. Mana ida aga isani heran itimurani hida ata isi su ni ndandamu yakka ma taana. It's very interesting to hear this from a OPDO uh, member or from this uh, uh, parliament member, really. Uh, we are advocating for justice in Ethiopia. We are opposing the, you know, uh, the shoot to kill policy uh, Abi Ahmed is uh, employing. Uh, we are talking about the accountability we are, you know, advocating for accountability, for justice, for the rule of law. Now this guy is talking uh, that language. It's surprising. It's, you know, very interesting to hear that. Uh, those uh, 39 Karayu Oromos, they were having a traditional service uh, at their residence, you know, you know, enjoying and uh, doing all the cultural activities. And uh, they were, sec you know, surrounded by security forces taken into the forest. He say, uh, uh, Burka forest area. And uh, they told them uh, to, you know, kneel, kneel down and uh, shoot uh, on the head of 16. They killed 16, you know, brutally on the head. And uh, the, the remaining, they took them uh, into uh, prison. Uh, they, they, he said he, he got this uh, revealing information from the two escapees. Uh, we reported 41, so 39. Uh, two escaped from uh, the security forces and, uh, uh, you know, informed all about this uh, brutality. Genocide, actually, is a genocide carried out on Karayus. Uh, he is saying once they are, you know, under the government control, you know, they're supposed to be taken into prison. They're supposed to be uh, taken to... Uh, the court face justice if they did something uh, illegal. It's very interesting to hear that. He is right. That's why we are advocating. That's why concerned citizen media is created about, you know, to stop the atrocity, the genocide, the mistreatment, especially in Oromia region by Abi Ahmed security forces, by uh, federal police and the army. We are calling for accountability for the rules of law. So he is right by saying that. And uh, he say, uh, if they could finish, you know, if they could finish all 39, we wouldn't uh, hear about this. And, uh, you know, the <coughs> they are accusing the police force, why you didn't finish them all? Why you didn't finish them? You know, that's why we are now talking about the Karayu killings, and uh, we are blamed because of this, you know, uh, you should have finished them, all 39. So it's, it's a really uh, very important uh, uh, evidence. Uh, this is coming from the Prosperity Party official. And again, I say, please translate this, uh, you know, in a detail, keep it for re future reference and for future accountability for this criminal uh, uh, security forces and uh, uh, the leadership in, uh, in Ethiopia. 
So let's listen. Yeah, this is a really completely changed man. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Here. Ararsa Police Commissioner Ararsa Mardaza. Yeah, very interesting, really. Mm. Okay, let me. So, he was saying he is struggling, fighting for the equality for all Oromos. You know, he's uh, he didn't, you know, uh, he is advocating for all Oromos, uh, regardless of uh, religious difference or. Uh, 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 regional difference. Interesting to hear from this guy. Also now, very important, very important revealing document is he say the the ordinary security forces or the police uh, they they are they are the one uh, carry the uh, the attack, but they are carrying the order of the higher uh, hierarchy. They are not responsible for this killing. The responsibility lies on the, you know, the Oromia Regional Police Commissioner, Ararsa Merdaza. He mentioned by name. He mentioned by name. And uh, this should be recorded for future reference. This is not an ordinary witness. This is a parliament member. Uh, he is uh, for now put it on a police commissioner, but I don't think this is done only by the co police commissioner. I think this is in coordination of the Oromia uh, region president with the knowledge of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. I don't think this is a big crime. Uh, it will not be carried by the police commissioner uh, all alone. No. No, there must be uh, some coordination with the intelligence of the country, the country intelligence office, with the Prime Minister uh, Abiy Ahmed knowledge, and with the knowledge of the Oromia president, Oromia Rin, Shimalis Abdisa. So I know maybe some, uh, you know, some uh, grouping, he just mentioned the police commissioner. But I don't think the police commissioner can do this without the order from higher uh, or senior uh, level. So we will find out in the future. Uh, you know, this is a very serious revealing, and I hope the other killings will be revealed by this. Uh, you know, by the opportunity we are having now, uh, the fight, the infighting, the struggle for power or the grouping division between OPDO or Oromia Prosperity Party. 
So it requires independent investigation. Uh, you know, we have been calling for independent investigation for Hachalu Ndesa, Abdul Jabbar Hussein killing, and uh, other killings uh, happening uh, under, you know, under the name of Onak Shani, just by blaming them Onak Shani. So it should be investigated and the international community, the US uh, uh, and the uh, European Union, Human Rights Commission, Amnesty International, they should take this uh, revealing evidence very seriously, have independent investigation on these crimes. And if possible, you know, if possible, let, you know, uh, you know let them, you know, have uh, the cell phones of those senior officials easy very very easy to investigate very easy to find out on the killing of Haj Alundesa what was they are texting to each other what they were talking to each other those prosperity officials and the police commissioner those are uh, in the Taye Danda or Shimalis Abdisa Abi Ahmed uh, Marar uh, you know what you call Arar Samardasa easy to invest, to do the independent investigation i hope the united states or the human rights commission will uh, enforce it will do uh, their best uh, to end the atrocities happening in oromia region it's very very serious crime happening very serious genocide happening uh, you know purposely knowingly uh, with uh, with the intent of hurting the oromo people with the intent of destroying the Oromo identity. Uh, so I hope they will uh, pay attention. And uh, this is very revealing and uh, we'll follow it and uh, we will uh, report to you. So that's the, the, the only thing I wanna say about uh, this, uh, uh, this parliament member, Dr. Angasa Ibrahim. He is not a simple man now. He is a very official. He is not a simple activist. So we should take him seriously. And also uh, we should take Taye uh, Danda Aredo tweets. Also he tweeted about the killing of Karayus. So that's why we call for independent investigation. Everything will be open and uh, will be clear who killed Haj al who killed uh, Abdul Jabbar Hussein? Who killed about all these uh, 16, 16 Karayu Oromos? So, okay, let's read other news and then come back to a couple of new other videos. Thank you again. <coughs> uh, this is good for Ethiopia. Japan provides $12.4 million. Uh, aid to Ethiopia. On December 24, the government of Japan decided to extend emergency grant aid of 12.4 million US dollars for people in northern Ethiopia, Japan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said. The grant is to provide humanitarian assistance in the provision of relief items such as shelter and food through the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, World Food Program, WFP, International Organization for Migration, IOM, and United Nations Mine Action Service, UNMAS. Inter alia, the internally displaced persons, among others in Afar, Amara, and Tigray regional states. It is expected to cover the provisions of food supply to 270,000 people, relief items to 19,000 households, emergency shelter and non-food items to 14,000 households, dignity kits to 10,000 women, 
information on return and other long-term solution to 25,000 people, protection counseling service for 7,000 people, treatment support for 2,000 persons with disabilities and older persons, and explosive or, or, ordinance risk education for 10,000 people. The statement said, adding that the government of Japan will continue to work with the international community for peace and stability in Ethiopia. Okay, we appreciate uh, the Japanese government for this uh, donation. <clears throat> Uh, Somalia forces loyal to Somalia's Prime Minister gather outside presidential palace. Hundreds of troops loyal to Somalia's Prime Minister Mohamed Hussein Roble camped on Tuesday near the residence of his political rival President Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed, a day after the President tried to suspend the Prime Minister. Roble has called the Mohammed's plans to suspend his, him a coup attempt. A statement from the United States, which operates in Somalia against Islamic, Islamist militias, militants, called on all sides to avoid escalation, but also appeared to back the Prime Minister. A Reuter photography at the scene said, the security force had taken no action by Tuesday afternoon apart from assembling, but the gathering spurred fears of potential clash between forces loyal to the two men. Troops have camped in our village. If the notorious Villa Somalia or presidential palace starts war, then there will be a crossfire. Kanab Osman, a mother of seven, who operates a grocery shop in a nearby district of the capital Mukadisho, told Reuters. Another resident and a local elder, Farah Ali, told Reuters security forces that had amassed in the area were fitting pickup trucks with artillery weapons. Somalia, where no central government has held broad authority for 30 years, is in the midst of protracted indirect election process to choose new leadership, repeatedly held up amid confrontation between Mohammed and Roble. In April, an attempt by the president to extend his four-year term by two years led army fact functions loyal to each man to briefly seize rival positions in Mogadishu. The United States State Department African Affairs Bureau said in a tweet late on Monday that it was prepared to act against those obstructing Somalia's path to peace. The attempted suspension of Roble is alarming and we support his office his efforts for rapid and credible elections, the Bureau said. All parties must des des desist from escalatory actions and statements. In suspending Roble, Mohammed accused the Prime Minister of stealing land owned by the Somali National Army and of interfering with the Defense Ministry investigation. In the response, Roble said, Mohammed's action was unconstitutional and aimed at derailing the election. He ordered security forces to start taking order from him rather than the president. The months long dispute between the prime minister and the president has dis distracted the government from fighting an insurgency against Al Qaeda linked group Al Shabaab. In a statement on Tuesday, the Council of Presidential Candidates, a group of politicians who plan to contest the election 
including two former presidents, called on Muhammad to step down as soon as possible in order to end the crisis. Muhammad and Robley have accused each other of holding up the parliamentary elections, which began November 1 and were supposed to be completed by December, 4, uh, December 24. As of Saturday, only 24 of 275 lower house representatives had been elected. According to Somalia's indirect electoral process, regional councils are meant to choose a Senate. Clan elders are then meant to pick members of the lower house, which would then choose a new president at a date yet to be fixed. Credit Reuters. So, Somalia crisis uh, is getting uh, tough. So, this, uh, uh, you know, massing of the soldiers uh, on the prime minister's side around the palace is a very serious one. And we will follow it and we will report to you. It happened before too. Uh, clashes, gunfire. <clears throat> so I hope uh, Mr. Mohammed will uh, listen to Somalian citizens under the international call for peaceful and fair election. He's playing around, as I said yesterday. <clears throat> Israel demolish a Palestinian house. The Israeli occupation authorities demolished on uh, Tuesday, a Palestinian-owned three-story house in al Iswahi, neighborhood of occupied East Jerusalem, displacing 23 people, local news agency reported. Owner of the house, Nidal Yasin Mustafa, said that the municipality of staff protected by the Israeli occupation police surrounded the area where the building is located and demolished the building under the pretext it had, it had been built without a permit. Nidal Mustafa said 23 people had lived inside this house, uh, nothing that, uh, noting that all of them have become homeless as they were left in the street. Speaking to Sofa, uh, Safa news agency, Nidal said that the family received the first note asking them to, a, to pay fine of uh, 29,000 seven years ago. He said his family paid the fine, but the municipality asked them to pay a new fine worth of 45,000. Uh, he said, we have paid uh, 13,000. Nidal also said that, uh, Nidal also said that his family had paid tens of thousands of shekels for plants, maps, and other stuff in order to obtain a building license, but they failed. Wafa News Agency says the Palestinians are forced to build on their land in occupied Jerusalem without a permit because getting one is almost impossible. The Israeli occupation has been trying to keep the Palestinian presence in the city to a minimum in order to change the demographic balance in favor of the Jewish population. The family said after losing all attempts to save the house, they appealed to the Israeli municipality to demolish the building themselves in order to avoid the high fee paid to the municipality. But the municipality surprised them and demolished the house. So that is uh, the misery happening in uh, you know, in the occupied West Bank on Palestinians. Uh, so many atrocities happening and uh, 
Palestinians are without power, without any voice. Israelis are slowly uh, uh, taking their lands, expanding their territory. And uh, as you see, no justice, no justice uh, for Palestinians. Uh, they are uh, playing with them with uh, uh, heavy fines, uh, with the court system, with uh, using uh, security forces. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's another apartheid, another apartheid. And uh, recognized, but the global community also has so many resolutions, but they have no teeth to enforce it. Through time, Palestinians are losing more land. That's why I say, you know, the two-state solution should happen immediately. If not, uh, the Palestinians will continue to lose their land. Okay, Qatar uh, Doha condemned Israeli attack on Palestinians in West Bank. Qatari's foreign minister yesterday condemned what it described as continuous attacks carried out by the Israeli occupation forces and the settlers against the Palestinians in the occupied city of Nablus. The Israeli attacks are a continuation of their brutal crimes practiced against the Palestinian people. The ministry said in a statement describing the aggression as a flagrant violation of international laws and human rights. The statement called on the international community to urgently move to stop the continuation, the continuous Israeli attacks against Palestinians, stressing on Qatari's stance toward the Palestinians' right to establish an independent state. Dozens of Palestinians were injured in recent days in escalating confrontation between the occupation forces and Palestinians in Burqa following attacks by settlers on Palestinian home. Credit Middle East. Okay, uh, it was interrupted uh, for a shortage of space on my computer. So uh, I almost done. I have uh, one uh, press release is not press release is a readout a readout of uh, Secretary uh, Blinken call with Kenya's President Kenyatta then uh, I have two videos one on the passing of uh, uh, former uh, uh, Democratic uh, Senator majority leader at the time. Uh, he passed away at 82 today. And the other one is uh, Antonio Guterres message for 2022. So let's finish up. Uh, thank you again. <clears throat> uh, the blow is attributed to spokesperson Need Price. Uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke with Kenya President Uhuru Kenyatta today to discuss regional security issues of mutual interest, including the situation in Ethiopia and Somalia. In Ethiopia, they agreed on the urgent need for a cessation of hostilities, unhindered humanitarian access, an end to human rights abuses and violations, and a negotiated resolution to the conflict. The Secretary expressed the strong support of the United States for the mediation efforts of President Kenyatta and African Union Special Envoy for the uh, Horn of Africa, Ola Sogon, Obasanjo. On Somalia, the Secretary underscored the importance of Somalia's national and the federal member state leaders, con concluding parliamentary and presidential elections immediately and free from irregularities that would jeopardize the credibility of the outcome. The Secretary noted the United States' opposition 
to the attempted suspension of Prime Minister Prime Minister Robley, and they agreed that all parties should refrain from escalatory actions and statements. So that's a readout uh, on the call between Secretary uh, uh, Blinken and uh, Kenya President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. So now, uh, uh, you know, Kenya is playing a major role. Uh, it's almost replacing Ethiopia in a, in a, in a previous uh, Melazenai time. Ethiopia was number one for any African issues, uh, even for the global uh, consultation or for G20, G7 meetings. Now Kenya is uh, leading uh, the role and taking uh, or replacing Ethiopia, taking the attention. So that's all uh, for reading part. And now let's listen to about the passing of uh, Senator Harry Reid and also uh, uh, UN Chief uh, Antonio Guterres message for 2022. Thank you again. Let's listen. Senator, longtime Senator Harry Reid. Reid was the longest serving senator in Nevada history when he retired back in 2017. And our David Charnes joins us now with more information. Well, Harry Reid's family telling us here at 8 News now that he died at home from cancer today. We were told he was surrounded by family. His wife sending us this statement, and it says in part, Harry died peacefully this afternoon, surrounded by our family following a courageous four-year battle with pancreatic cancer. We are so proud of the legacy he leaves behind, both on the national stage and his beloved Nevada. Harry was deeply touched to see his decades of service to Nevada honored in recent weeks with the renaming of Las Vegas' airport in his honor. Harry Reid was born in Searchlight in 1939. He was the youngest lieutenant governor at just 30. Then he went on to serve on the Nevada Gaming Commission, then as a U.S. rep, and then senator, eventually becoming the most powerful man in the U.S. Senate. This was part of his final speech as he bowed out in 2017. During my 34 years in Congress, I've seen the country change. I've seen Nevada change. The changes in the country in Nevada have been for the better. Harry Reid is our state's longest serving senator with five decades of service. Of course, the airport just named to dishonor fittingly a place so many first step foot in a state that he simply treasured so much. Former President Barack Obama says Reid's wife had asked those close to him to send him a letter these past few days. And I'm going to read part of this here. He, uh, the former president, writes, enjoy your family and know that you are loved by a lot of people, including me. The world is better because of what you've done. And then the former president says, not bad for a skinny poor kid from Searchlight. Of course, those two had a good uh, relationship there because for the former president to get anything done, he needed Senator Reid, who was in control of the majority of senators at the time, which were Democrats, to get his agenda done. So they really knew each other quite well. And it was Harry Reid who got the ball rolling to learn more about UFOs. An interesting tidbit there. In 2007, he was the one that started pressuring the Pentagon to study them as possible real things that, of course, gave us more information, including those photos and videos we have come to see with our George Knapp over the years. Brian and Denise. More tributes are coming in for the former Senate Majority Leader, uh, former Nevada Governor Bob Miller, talking to 8 News Now just a few minutes ago about his long friendship with the former senator. It's a sad day for all of us in Nevada. I mean, Harry has been the most incredible leader probably in the history of the state. Uh, it, it's difficult to think of anybody else that's had a more significant role on a national level and translated that to things that were beneficial to Nevada than Harry Reid. Um, he was one of a kind and, and you can't replace somebody as gifted as he was. Miller says he was motivated to run for Senate by the Democratic leader after he maxed his term as governor. Now we'll have much more on the impact Reid had in Nevada and the country and so many more tributes coming up tonight on 8 News Now at 11. Yeah. The world welcomes 2022 with our hopes for the future being tested. By deepening poverty and worsening inequality, 
by an unequal distribution of Covid vaccines, by climate commitments that fall short, and by ongoing conflict, division and disinformation. These are not just policy tests, these are moral and real-life tests. And they are tests that humanity can pass if we commit to making 2022 a year of recovery for everyone. Recovery from the pandemic, with a bold plan to vaccinate every person everywhere. Recovery for our economies, with wealthier countries supporting the developing world through financing, investment and debt relief. Recovery from mistrust and division, with a new emphasis on science, facts and reason. Recovery from conflicts, a renewed spirit of dialogue, compromise and reconciliation. And recovery for our planet, with climate commitments that match the scale and urgency of the crisis. Moments of great difficulty are also moments of great opportunity. To come together in solidarity, to unite behind solutions that can benefit all people, and to move forward together with hope in what our human family can accomplish. Together, let's make recovery our resolution for 2022. For people, planet and prosperity. I wish you all a happy and peaceful new year. Okay, that's uh, Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations message for uh, recovery and uh, climate, humanity, all the challenges and uh, to come together and uh, to defeat all these challenges. And, uh, you know, uh, I know Harry Reid, we follow him uh, during uh, Obamacare and other challenges, you know, we follow politics uh, since 2001. So we know him, he's a nice gentleman fighting for all, uh, uh, you know, ordinary citizens especially. Uh, so we appreciate his service and we, you know, I express on behalf of concerned citizens, I express my condolence on his passing uh, for his family and uh, relatives and uh, friends and fans of uh, Senator Harry Reid. And uh, rest in peace and uh, excellent service for the American people. So, you know, when the times come, it comes. So we can do nothing, but we just appreciate and, uh, you know, express our condolences, uh, appreciate his service for the country, at least for 34 years as a senator. So thank you for your service and, uh, you know, rest in peace. And uh, I wish comfort and strength again for the families and relatives and the friends of Senator Harry Reid. Thank you. That's all I have for today. Uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, like my videos or comment on it. I will be back with other news and updates. So long, everyone.